Avada Kedavra. And we are live right now, Mr. Jab. We are finally live. And welcome, welcome, folks, to Q&A episode 21. I am, you know, uh, as uh, narcissistic and uh, psychotic and uh, what's, the, what's the dark triad these days? Uh, oh, gosh, what is it? What is the dark triad? Well, whatever the dark triad is, I'm all three right now for some reason, but fair enough. Also, joining us in the studio, we have our lovely little bonsai tree known as Jimmy, aka Slim Jim, uh, joining us today. So um, I'm also trying to like educate myself on proper uh, 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 tree, uh, I don't know, manicures, uh, pedicures, and uh, I mean, I have a black thumb, you can tell, right? And uh, But apparently this tree is going to teach me how to have a green thumb, right, Mr. Jab? You think so? You think I got what it takes to take care of a tree? You probably don't, do you? Mm. That's okay, I don't blame you. I'll give that tree, like, one week left to one live. One week left to live, huh, Jab? Really? You think one week, huh? Even, well, I don't know if I can do that. Even if you did absolutely thing. nothing. Yeah. Even if you did absolutely yeah. nothing, it would probably die in a month, but I somehow get the feeling it's going to die within the next week. Oh, yes. Machiavellian. Aaron Lee. Shout out to Aaron Lee. Psychopath, <laughs> narcissistic, and Machiavellian. You know, when I was playing EVE Online, and I was in Syndicate Enterprise and EVE Online, like the literal best corp of Northern Coalition dot, and then we ended up inside of uh, Test Alliance. Please ignore uh, that jackass who didn't like me very much. He was a director in that corporation. He put in my title that I was some... Uh, Machiavellian narcissistic psychopath uh, in my uh, title uh, within the corporation in this video game that I played. That was pretty interesting and pretty fun. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I mean, never not go like full dark triad, I guess, you know. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, before we get on the questions, let's talk about the format real quick. We have Patreon platinum questions, followed by Patreon silver questions, followed by YouTube super chats discord questions and youtube regular questions because we'll like randomly like you know say oh you have a question on youtube definitely check it out just know that uh it's one question uh you know from platinum one question for silver and we do that at the beginning of each hour that we start so when we get to hour two we go back to platinum and silver again for questions uh and then obviously youtube super chats we actually have a feed in discord now so like we're actually like intelligent about it and then through this feed and Discord, it tells us what the super chats are, so we don't like miss it and whatnot. So for those of you that were concerned that we were missing super chats, we're not missing them anymore. It's like not going to happen. So uh, I think yeah, it's not happening. Yeah, it's not happening uh, now that uh, at all. Yep, and now Jab can uh, not lose his place anymore in Discord. You know, and uh, right, yeah, right, all those amazing things. Mm. Jabba, 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 jabba. You know, all the coin things. slot is nice and lubricated. The and coin ready for slot an is nice and lubricated. <laughs> Shit, dude. An, ex <laughs> an excessive amount of coins can be slotted excessive, without excessive amount causing of any. Without causing okay. any excess wear and tear. No so, excess uh, wear and tear. Okay, so uh, I have to ask, Jab, are we? Uh, is this is this for uh, actual like like hard currency, or is this Chuck E. Cheese tokens? Like, I need to find out. You know, is this Chuck E. Cheese tokens? Do you not actually? Well, do you not actually know what Chuck E. Cheese tokens are? I mean, you're an Aussie. Do you even know what Chuck E. Cheese is? Maybe I shouldn't be asking that question. I mean, I yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I watched some videos on that conspiracy that they were reusing used pizzas or something. Like, I'm not there's sure a conspiracy on Chuck E. Cheese about reused pizzas. Okay. Yeah, the, I watched these a bunch of conspiracy videos about Chuck E. Cheese, and apparently someone was accusing them of uh, reusing used pizzas that went back. Like, they'd slot together, like, a bunch of slices from different pizzas, and they were, people were noting that the pizzas were mismatching or something like that, and then Chuck E. Cheese was like, no, this is what happens when you cut it. And it's yeah. like, uh-oh. Uh-oh! Uh -oh. All right, we better get the show started before uh, uh, Muriel get Uribe sued by Chuck e. Cheese, freaks yeah. out and uh, you know takes things a little too far for us today. Anyway, uh, yeah. yeah. All right. So fire it up. Uh, what's the first question, bro? What's the first question? Patreon Platinum. Oh, I, oh, oh, actually, before we do that, just a short public service announcement. Uh, make sure you do your Windows update or your Google Chrome update because there's a zero day exploit out there. So uh, double check that your Google Chrome and your Windows are updated like right now. Like 
as much as I'd hate to say it, like even shut down this stream to make sure you update your Google Chrome at the very least. Yeah. All right, and yeah. Come right that. back. <clears throat> come right, come right back. And if you've noticed that your Google Chrome wasn't updated, you can send us a nice donation as a thank you for not having yeah. your credit card get hacked couple, by hackers. Couple of shout outs right now. Want to give a shout out to uh, Maddie Bojangles for being an absolute badass. Thank you, Mister Good Sir. Robert Potts as well for running our Recovering Nice Guy group, our support group that we have for men. Uh, I believe we meet every Thursday night. If you are not part of the Recovering Nice Guy group, you need to be in that group. We talk. It's, it's where men, you know, uh, instead of uh, discussing, uh, you know, our feelings, uh, we, we decide to actually uh, plot and uh, take over the world, picking the brain style. Exactly. Yep. And, and that world just happens to be the world of our own homes. <laughs> you, yep. you know that... You know that you know that place all those radical feminists talk about how like men are meeting up to like take over the world and like smoke cigars and drink alcohol and jo and talk about you know the best way to oppress women. That's exactly where it happens. In, it, exactly, it's like all of a sudden they summon the spirit of Corey Wayne and become one in, in consciousness. <laughs> yeah, that's that's really effective. And my final final shout out goes to Dolph Dervish. Awesome to have my number one critic with us this evening. We love Dolph Dervish. Uh, and Dolph Dervish, if you're having an identity crisis like I used to at one point in time, I'm right there for you, buddy. We'll help you get through it. If not, awesome. Glad you figured it out. If you're still having trouble, that's all good. It happens to all of us. Trust me, it happened to me. And I just <laughs> had like a really hard time for like six months to deal with that, if you know what I mean. All and, right. And like, seriously, don't be all SE inferior about that because I literally said that on the live stream. Like, I'd appreciate it because I didn't mean any harm by it. Trust me. So, where's uh, Matty Bojangles to uh, come back and be like to me, you know, like the Jesus statue? But anyway. Uh, okay. So, Patreon Platinum question one. Let's get that show on the road. What is it, Jab? What do we got? Uh, all right, we've got a question from Mello, and he asks, with the context of TI being prone to getting stuck in assumptions, do you think you could be wrong about your any of your typings done via live stream, and how do you mediate confirmation bias? Okay, uh, the answer to that question is yes, I could be wrong, and how do you mediate confirmation bias is to basically listen to multiple uh, clips for verification. Now... As soon as I said that, there's that one person that's like, well, on your last How to Type stream, you were talking about that Leo guy, and you seriously jumped to the conclusion that he was actually an ENFP, when I really think he's an INFJ, and you only did one clip, so I really think it's very necessary to do another clip on that so because that was brought up in our next how to type stream yes i will do right by this audience and yes we will retype leo for you folks i promise that way there's no question but yes mistypings do happen but for that i point you all to go to season uh 15 please and then at season 15 you can uh um uh, watch that episode uh specifically uh for that so you're good to go on that side um uh like you know how to avoid mistyping um so anyway next question all right next question is from Mello again we're doing two for the platinum well at the start at least we might come back to them later and give them an extra one that's fine but yeah um, on a more casual note how much of your discord do you think is typed incorrectly uh probably about 70 percent i'd say probably about 70 75 percent of the discord is typed incorrectly and we're actually going to be rolling out uh, something in the future to make that uh, more accurate for everybody as a new Patreon perk uh, where uh, we will actually be setting up a, a typing session with me to verify your type on Discord just to make sure that it's uh, available and that it'll be available as a Patreon a perk in the very near future. Uh, so yeah, for that, folks. And after Chase does type you, you get a nice uh, verified tag. <clears throat> If Bruce Lee like is not an is ENTP, type? then he's definitely an ISFJ. He's one of the two. So we'll figure that one out. Yeah. So, yeah, verified tag If when that does come out. Yep. Um, well, this isn't really a question, but he just added a comment on the end. So I'll just read it out anyway. I don't think you really need to answer it like a question. Go for it. Finally, it boggle boggles me how talking with famous people could think someone with SI Trickster would go on tyrants and tangents like Chase does. Tyrants si and tangents? 
I never go on tirades or tangents. Never, never. I am actually an ENTJ in disguise, people. And I am always high and drunk every time I do a stream. Every <laughs> single time. I promise. I am, like, so high right now. No, not really. But anyway, I mean, it's not like you could tell. You know what I'm saying? It's not like you could tell. I mean, who knows? So, but, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just in case you all forgot, giant robot lives matter. That's right, Lin Yen Chin. We love you. Uh, oh, you think he's an ISTP? No, no thanks. No, I, I disagree with that, Mr. Chrism. But thank you for your opinion anyway. Uh, shout out to Mr. Chrism for uh, going for it. We'll verify Bruce Lee. I'm sure we'll do Bruce Lee on our next How to Type stream. Why not? You know, be like water. You know what I'm saying? Be like water. All right, what's next? Oh, uh, no, I, I just realized the statement. You meant like if you're an ENTJ, you'd have SI Trickster, but you don't because you go on tangents all the time, and SI Tricksters don't go on tangents. Never mind. That's what he was saying. I misread that. Um, okay. This comes from Mr. Washnis, and he oh, asks, Mr. Washnis. Write... Love that guy. Will you write all of this info in a book or let someone else do it? Uh, yes, it will be written. But first things first, we're trying to get the read Reader's Digest versions of all of the types. So like when you come to our website at csjoseph.life, um, wow, I'm like sounding like a salesman tonight. I'm sorry. Um, you're going to have uh, pages that you go to dedicated to each of the types. It will have descriptions, cognitive function definitions, uh, temperaments, interaction styles, specific videos, basically. It'd be like the gateway drug. It's just like that that one link that you just give to somebody that just handles everything they need to know, like <laughs> right off the bat, they're good to go. We're actually working on that right now because we're realizing people are yep. having a hard time like sifting through like the information that they need. And that way they could just go right. in there, go to that page, get everything they need, and they're good to go. And they're not going anywhere from there. You know what I'm saying? So that's just kind of the direction we're going for there. Oh, and be like one water. Link. Be like water is extrovert intuition. Thank you very much. All right, next question. One link to rule them all. One link to find <laughs> them. One link to describe them. Uh... All right, uh, next question is from him again, because we're doing two. Why do two introverts hanging together Chris, not um, drain each other's energy? Or is that just an illusion? Okay, I, I, actually, I actually had a very good discussion about this earlier today, actually. It's fantastic. I'm glad that question asked. Uh, also, Chrism, keep the criticism coming. I don't grow unless you criticize me. So keep it up, please, good sir. Uh, so, uh, okay. So energy transfer within introversion and extroversion. Uh, so you have, let's say you have an introvert and an extrovert at the same time. So relationship speaking, friendship speaking, uh, working between like your boss or your employee and whatnot. Remember, an introverted situation is one person or two people, okay? And if you have two extroverts in an introverted situation, they're probably going to be drawing uh, energy from each other. They're just both going to get tired and it's just not going to work out. If you have an introvert plus an extrovert in an introverted situation, that's okay because it's enough solitude that the introvert can still draw energy in and regain energy at the same time the extrovert is drawing energy from them. So it be, creates this uh, unlimited energy cycle such that the introvert is not actually like drained in the process. However, if you add in a third person, regardless of them being introverted or extroverted, you're gonna have a problem because guess what? That energy is just gonna get drained from the introvert. They're going to have to withdraw at that point in time. Why is this necessary? I get so many complaints about people like, well, you know, I'm an introvert and I think I should date another introvert. No. They automatically no. assume. No. Yeah, they, they automatically assume. <laughs> sorry, you're going to make Jimmy upset here. We don't want to do that. Uh, so right. uh, uh, you don't want to assume that it, it, because here's the thing. You... Because you're an introverted situation with just two people, you're not extracting that energy out of them, basically. You're not. I mean, the extrovert is, but the introvert is still gaining energy because it's still an introverted situation for their mental energy. And they're able to stay in their ego, and that's fine. They don't necessarily need to withdraw. And the higher compatibility that they have, it could be a golden pair. It could be, uh, like, like, for example... Um, STJs and, and uh, uh, STPs, for example, it doesn't matter, uh, or, uh, or NTJs, NTPs, uh, it could go even a little bit further, uh, or um, SJs with SPs or NJs with NPs, right? 
if they have pretty high compatibility, be it on emotional compatibility or sexual compatibility, if one of those bases is covered and they still have their extrovert, introvert, you know, situation, there's no energy loss and they'll be fine. So this whole like, I need to be with an introvert because I'm an introvert. That's a myth. It's actually a myth. So like, don't do that. It's not like a thing. It's not a thing. So next question. All right. Um, the next question is a quite a long one. So let's read this out. <clears throat> this comes from Seraph. Un- Seraph, Seraph interrupted. And we asks, love him. In some of your lectures on compatibility, you mentioned that many times you see more pairings with the second or third most compatible type rather than the golden ideal. Obviously, rarity of certain types would be a factor, but could this also be because there is a greater initial attraction when complementing functions have different attitude? The child wants to ride on the hero's back, so to speak. Or perhaps it's because the golden pairing is too intense for many people and they elect their less than ideal pairing as a result. Okay, they elect their less than ideal pairing as a result because the golden pair is too intense for people because they can read each other like a book. They actually have some severe vulnerability. It is severe vulnerability because they have to be willing to completely let go. The thing is, is that I have a lot of faith in the golden pair because when people have the golden pair as a result, um, it's uh, it just it, everything just works automatic. It's just automatic. Like you don't have to really worry about things. And then you can reach that higher level of trust and that higher level of vulnerability sooner than later, right? And, uh, you know, and of course people are like, well, you know, I don't know if I can do that because I'm not sure like I could trust people. And I'm like, I get that. But then again, you're gonna find yourself in lower quality relationships because you're not willing to allow yourself to get that vulnerable. But I've been screwed in the past. And I'm like, yeah, but why are you projecting your past relationships on other people? But why? But why? Why why are you doing this to us, huh? You see, you Mm. got to make sure that you just know yourself, right? And that you have self-respect is very important because if you have self-respect, that means you are able to assert your boundaries and you'd know how to assert your boundaries if you actually bothered, actually bothered to watch season six playlist on this YouTube channel. You know all about boundaries and how important they are. And once you have all those boundaries, you're good to go, sir. Very good to go. Because if you don't negotiate those boundaries right at the beginning of your relationship, you're basically screwed, right? You can't. And then, and then, as as someone who taught me, um, uh, and and Jimmy and them is very well acquainted. Uh, you know, you don't want to have uh, avoidant uh, attachment styles. You want to have a proper secure attachment style. Uh, and if you're avoidant, it's because you're not uh, asserting your boundaries. Yes, INTPs. I'm calling you out. Oh, and INFPs. Yes, INPs. Good times but the thing is everyone struggles with this it's just they struggle with it more uh but yeah like just be aware of that that is uh that is definitely something uh, to figure out okay yes edwin ortiz we see that uh super chat oh, yeah. um but we'll get to it in a minute uh we won't forget about you good sir thank you very much we see it we will handle it um all right cool uh, next question yeah we just got to get through the Patreon questions and then we'll get to you, Mr. Edwin. All right, awesome. next question. What would your advice be for someone who does their best to be consistent but always ends up self-sabotaging, e.g. getting torn apart by emotions and resorting to demonic tendencies? Yes, this is me. I never get what I want and I have such a bad problem with violence. Problem with violence? ENFP. Okay. Uh, can you ask me that question a different way? All right, so... TLDR. <laughs> someone lacks consistency because they're constantly self-sabotaging, which involves getting torn apart by their emotions and resulting to... Oh, I yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they lack self-discipline. Yeah, so you just need to develop your introverted sensing. Get over your fear of the unknown and then do things you haven't done before and you'll be fine. Uh, now, if you're a man, you need to read some books. Read How to Be a 3% Man, very important. Read No More Mr. Nice Guy. Okay. Uh, Read Codependent No More immediately. Read 12 Rules for Life, even though it's technically for men. uh, Women can get some serious uh, value out of it. Um, And uh, 
really you have to force yourself to do things that you're not in the mood to do. See, that's the problem with ENFPs and loyalty. And the loyalty of ENFPs is because ENFPs are all like, well, you know, I'm really loyal to this and I have lots of discipline and I could do what I should, but I'm just not in the mood. And then they don't do anything. Right. That's the problem. <laughs> the mood is the issue, right? So just remember, it's not about your mood. Just because you don't feel good about it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. You know what I'm saying? Because if you always did, mm -hmm. well, it, it feels good, so I'm going to do it like every other mouth breather out there, then that would be a problem. Wow. Just saying. Well, you don't want to be the mouth breather, so don't, you know? Fair enough. Um, yeah, but she also seems to reference her emotions also sabotaging her. Well, again, that comes with the mood because emotions are the mood and that mood comes from introverted feeling. Right. Pe people with introverted feeling make decisions based on their mood. You could also like just watch people who have introverted feeling and every now and then they're like, oh, I'm not in the mood for that. Oh, I'm in the mood for that. It, like the word mood actually comes up in their vocabulary, but you put them around and then you're around TIF users and you don't ever hear the word mood. Think about that. So anyway, next question. Um, okay, next question. Uh, does physical pain tolerance have anything to do with SI? Yes, example, it does. I have a friend with SI child who's a complete crybaby when it comes to punches on the shoulder or fist bumps with me and my SI demon have severely high pain tolerance. Okay, so if, uh, if introverted sensing is like super low in a demon, they have super high pain tolerance. If introverted sensing is in the top four functions, they are a lot more sensitive. But if their introverted sensing is in the child or the hero slot, they are very sensitive to things extremely sensitive uh -huh. if they're a pessimistic slot like a parent or an inferior they can tolerate and endure much more but heroes and child has a hard time although they can master self-discipline such that they can actually outlast everybody else provided they actually focus on that self-discipline otherwise they will not be able to so perfect <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this next, next question is a good one. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat because this one has to be read perfectly. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> How can I stop? How can I stop an ENFP from Alex Jonesing me every time <laughs> they see me at the gym? It seems like he latches on because I'm the only one in his life that is open to discussing his theories with him, but it always dissolves into an argument about the existence of truth. I don't, want my, I don't want to make him feel bad, but I'm really getting annoyed. All right. Well, you give him the absolute truth argument. Is that Does absolute truth exist, yes or no? And then the uh, ENFP says no. And then it's like, okay, well, is that a true statement? Well, yes, of course it is. <laughs> well, then you just made, you just, you just destroyed your own argument there, bro. Sorry. But, but, but anything could be true. And then like me, the ENTP with introverted feeling trickster could be like, well, anything can be a good thing. Anything can be a bad thing, right? Just like they're like, oh, anything can be true. Anything can be false, but that's not actually true. Absolute truth does exist, but so also does absolute good. It also exists as well. <laughs> so just be aware of that. They both exist because logic deems it so, right? Um, Otherwise, uh, how do you stop them from Alex Jonesing you? You criticize them. Straight up. You just criticize them. That's all you got to do. Criticize them. And you apply critical thinking to everything they do. And then eventually they'll either change or they'll just get annoying and stop initiating. So next question. Uh, next question comes from, well, I don't know. I won't mention the name because this is a question about compatibility and crushes. How can I learn to work with compatible personality types without developing crushes on them? Oh, INFP, get... I'm guessing female from the name. Okay, this is an INFP. Um, the problem with the, that is that the INFP, if they're around them and that person gives them a really good experience, they will start becoming loyal to that person mm -hmm. and want to receive more of that good experience from them. And then uh, that could be a, a, a big deal, right? So to avoid that, the INFP has to put up boundaries right at the beginning and make it known, hey, by the way, we're friends right now, but we're not in a relationship and I don't want a relationship from you. And the INFP just has to be willing to do the right thing and speak that out. 
but they're so worried that the other person is going to think less of them or no, they're going to feel bad. I don't want to make this person feel bad and I don't want this person to feel less about me and I don't want them to think less about me. So I think it's just safer for me to not say anything and let things play out naturally, even though you're still interested. You see what I'm saying? Right. Like That's not going to work. So anyway, next question. Um, next question. Why can people sometimes make me feel guilty even though they're obviously wrong and even though I have F.E. Trickster? No, I am not mistyped. INFJ, I am an INTJ. Okay, F.E., you can make people feel guilty with F.E., but primarily it's actually F.I. users that guilt people because F.I. Right. is the source of feeling, is the source of morality. If I make a decision that could compromise the F.I. user of another person, right, then I am... Mm -hmm you know, potentially, uh, you know, harming them. And then I feel guilty as a result because I don't want introverted feeling to feel bad ever. It's really important to me, an Effie child, that they always value themselves, that they always know that I think highly of them always, you know, even sometimes when they're mad at me or upset at me or out to sabotage me or destroy me, I still want them to feel good about themselves anyway, because at the end of the day, I still value them. But it's also like, okay, but you're also causing me a problem, so you can't be in my life right now. You know what I'm saying? It's like it goes in that direction. But it's usually right. the source of guilt, the true source of guilt is FI, but it's not that FI is necessarily intentionally doing it. It's all just about how FI is reacting and providing feedback to the output of FE. Because don't forget, input, process, output, feedback. Input is TE, process is TI. So in order for TI users to think properly, they still require the input of the TE user. So what does that mean? TI, they're pretty smart. They're pretty brilliant. But then without TE, they're dumb. So you need TE users right. around. And then TI produces FE. And you give FE as an output to other people. But then the FI user provides that feedback. And through that feedback, they are okay. Right? So... That's just that's just kind of how it works. That's just kind of how it goes. So, but yeah, uh, that's kind of how the energy flows uh, within thinking and feeling and emotional compatibility thereof. Next question, good sir. Um, how would an INTP who hates reading get into it? I know it can improve me, and I want to gain knowledge from books, but it bores me so much. Never been good at it. Reading just doesn't seem like a good way okay, to get uh, into my brain you are addicted to dopamine you need to stop playing video games for two weeks <laughs> and looking at your wow. phone and social media you need to literally abstain from that kind of life because you're addicted to dopamine and through your dopamine addiction it's going to cause a problem so right. you're not going to be bored of books until you abstain si users need to do this si users must abstain from things in their life without abstaining from things it can be a serious issue um, so understand that. Why, why do we have the concept of fasting? Fasting is so good for SI users because it keeps SI users in check because their souls can be diluted with things. And when you're having a dopamine addiction, then all of a sudden you're not able to actually produce and do writing or books, etc. So just be aware of that. Right. So yeah, that's how I'd answer that question. Wow. All right, next question. How can an INTJ be less narrow-mindedly focused on specific things and become more developed in any so as to be open to a few more possibilities? Um, really, it comes down to wanting to do it for the sake of somebody else uh, and uh, not being afraid or worried about starting the wrong thing. Just kind of start things and see what happens. But if you have a third party there where you're giving them a good experience and trying to comfort them through the process, you're bringing it in the SE realm instead of the NE realm. And because if you're high performance is trying to give that person a really, really, really good experience, then you're able to execute and get things done for their sake because you actually care about them, because you want them, because you feel good about them, et cetera. And then you don't have to worry about the expert intuition uh, consequences of your actions because it's specifically focused on giving that other person a really good experience or performing properly for them. Performance is everything to the INTJ, which makes them absolutely dope and wonderful, to be honest. I love SE Inferiors. They're fantastic because of that. It's an amazing experience. Yeah, every yeah. Time. Yeah, You're yeah. Fantastic. Next. Uh, 
from Byte, apart from Crush It by Va uh, Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, what other books do you recommend for ETPs? Uh, dot Com Secrets by Russell Brunson. Expert Secrets by Russell Brunson. Lean Startup by Eric Ries. Uh, the Mystery Method. Uh, I'd forget the author. Uh, the Art of Seduction. The 33 Strategies of War. The 50th Law. Basically anything that Robert Greene ever wrote. Um, the Alchemist by Coelho. Or Coho. I don't know how to say his name. Um, and uh, let's see. What is another book that would, would be... Oh, Think and Grow Witch by Napoleon Hill and Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill. And if you want a really scary book, you read Outwitting the Devil. It will screw with you in ways that you've never been screwed with before. It will screw with you. It's really bad, really rough. So, all right. Next. All right. Um, comes from Raychak19. Is it only your golden pair that can read you like a book, or is it the top four that you're most socially compatible with? Is it only... Is it only your golden pair that can read you like a book, or is it the top four that you're most socially compatible with? So... Uh, they can... The people, that... Those people can read you really well, but the, the golden pair and the second highest uh, would also be able to read you, but the golden pair absolutely can read you like a book. They, they have full understanding right. and absolute mastery over your yeah. soul. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, so let's get to that super chat question. Nice super chat question. Thank you, Edwin Ortiz. Where, uh, where did that? I oh, heard it is. Um. Okay, it didn't show up in the YouTube channel. It. So let me scroll up. Somewhere. Let me. Uh, it's okay. broken. Okay, I have. It. I found it. All right. Oh, you got it? Okay. I know, I found it. Yeah, I found it. For some reason, the uh, Super Chat widget for Discord's broken. Okay. What is your understanding of how good and bad judgments are made by FI users? Having FI parent, I'm not sure whether you have a comprehensive understanding. Still love you, though. All right. So how are good or bad judgments made? It's made, it's made based on a, uh, <coughs> a weighted value system in the soul. Okay. So you know how uh, when you would negotiate to buy things in ancient times and you have different weights on it and people would put gold or silver or coins or things and it would just kind of weigh things out? That's extroverted thinking. Extroverted thinking is used to weigh out the values, the FI, of the specific objects in order to make a deal, basically. So FITE users are constantly evaluating everything. Hey, does this person have value? Does this object have value? Does this purchase have value? Does this have value for me? Does this have, you know, and it's not about value for other people. It's about, does this have value for me based on the status, based on how many, based on the numbers. How you feel is based on numbers or values, right? Place value, for example. <coughs> and those values are put forward and extracted with extroverted thinking and then introverted feeling reacts to that. Oh, I feel good because there's a lot. <coughs> or I feel bad because there's less, basically. So yeah, that's how I'd answer mm -hmm. that question. All right. Uh, now we go to the regular Discord questions. So where are we up to? What do you think of visual typing? Haven't gotten into it, but it sounds interesting. Visual typing is awesome. <coughs> Man, I got something down my throat. <coughs> I think I like yeah. inhaled a bug. That's what I think happened. All right, well, I'll, I'll answer the question. <coughs> uh, visual typing, visual typing is good in the sense that you can get a feel of as to what one type is based on just on looking at them. Let me get some water so, real quick. One second. <clears throat> So when it comes to typing a person based on their looks, you basically don't, it's not how they look, it's you use ways of which they've changed how they looked to get an idea of their interaction styles. So for example, people are going to apply makeup in different ways and try and achieve different things while wearing makeup. 
Um, they'll part their hairs in certain ways. You know, they'll be more natural. They'll be more organized about it. Um, so they'll follow a procedure. And usually you can tell some of those things with women. Um, with men, you can see how they cut their hair, uh, how they shave. Um, do they clean shave? Do they... Do they trim their beard? Do they let it fluff out and grow? Do they... Uh, I don't know. How, how do they dress? Usually you can gauge SI versus SE based on that. Um, and I guess the longer you've seen certain types do certain things, you can pick up on small traits and you can be like, oh, that's something an INTJ would do. Or, oh, that's something an ENFP should do. But the thing is, these could be learned behaviors, so you can't base it on that. It's just a nice guess to nudge you in the right direction. I wouldn't say you can accurately type someone just based on looking at them. All right. Chase, <clears throat> yes, what do you sir. think? Would you in, agree with my answer? response to which question? Uh, what do you think of visual typing? Haven't gotten into it. Visual it typing uh, is a thing. I visually type people today, actually. It was fun. I enjoyed it. This little INFJ, she's really cool. She comes up to our group at the meetup group that we had. And uh, she's like, hey, guys, uh, is this the meetup? And we're like, yeah. Okay, cool. I'm going to get coffee. And then she walks into uh, the coffee place that we were at. That we were at, And I'm like, oh, nice to see the INFJ just kind of showed up and then took off. And then came back like that. And everyone's like, you typed her that fast? Yes, within seconds. I knew exactly she's an INFJ. And yes, visual typing does work. I do have some visual typing skills. The problem is with visual typing is that I have yet to develop the system with which to convey it to you folks. I was hoping to bring one of my mentors onto the live stream and have him discuss visual typing because he's very very good at it and he's got se hero and you could actually explain all of the intricacies of visual typing to everybody so <clears throat> i um i yeah. actually when i go up to uh, portland in the very near future uh i will be uh um basically i'll i'll bring my gopro and i could definitely get a recording and then you guys could see one of my mentors and he'll be explaining uh how uh visual typing works and he'll just <laughs> He'll probably have a whiteboard, kind of like what I do, and whiteboard it out for us all. And I think it'll be fantastic to have that opportunity. So it's I think fantastic. that, yeah, I think that'll happen in spring break in uh, April. So uh, just just look for that uh, in the near future. So next question. Right, uh, these are Discord questions. So let's try and blitz these. Um, is it possible to make a parent act optimistically, the child act pessimistically, etc.? So is it, possi is it possible to make positive functions act negatively? <clears throat> yes, they can, because they can team up with other negative functions. Have you ever heard of the demonic child? The child function can uh, basically team up with the, demo the demon function, basically, and it can become super, oh super mega pessimistic. So the answer to that question is yes. <clears throat> also, in a situation in which someone needs to decide to either hurt the child or inferior functions, which is normally chosen? Child. Say again. You know? Yeah, so try, in a situation where in a situation where someone needs to decide whether they should hurt the child or inferior function, which is normally chosen? Child. To harm somebody? To I think social... it's talking about themselves. Oh, and the cho which like, ones do they want I, to develop first or If I'm in a situation that has two options and one would hurt the child, one would hurt the inferior, which would I pick? Usually the child. Usually it's a child. People are so protective right, of their inferior function, yeah. Another super chat from Edwin Ortiz. Edwin Ortiz, we love it. Yeah. Thank you. ENFPs have trouble being consistent because their SI is fearful of not being able to meet responsibilities. When they don't meet them, FI makes them feel cruddy for letting valued ones down. Thoughts? I agree with that, Edwin Ortiz, because ENFPs are all about obligations. And they don't take on too many obligations because they don't want to feel bad for not meeting those obligations. That's why, right. <laughs> for example, when they get contracts together, right? ENFPs are all about having their contracts, all about that fine print. That fine print protects them in those obligations, right? Fine print is uh, everything, basically. Uh, so <clears throat> it's uh, it's been, it's been a, a very interesting... Uh, well, it's difficult to say the least. 
So, yeah. All right. Um, I just want to quickly go back to the Patreon Q&A because I saw a question coming through Oh, there. I thought we were going to get that second hour. My bad. Uh, it's from someone who hasn't asked a question before, so I feel okay, like... Okay, that's fine. Answer. We got You got it, man. You, you know what you're doing. Your moral compass is better than mine. Let's do it. Yeah. Jimmy I agrees. I got it. Uh, Jimmy agrees. All right, Jimmy as agrees. An ESFP, I rec- as an ESFP, I recognize my shadow function a lot is especially under stress, ISFJ, and I was wondering about my subconscious INTJ and how healthy that could be for me to counter my shadow. I believe I felt a big aha moment when I found my passions and I believe to be my calling, and I'm thinking of using my super, super ego, ENTP, to really amp that. Now for the question. I feel split knowing I can transition from types within my full function. How would I know that my ESFP primary function is healthy or even know how would I know I am in my element because switching so much in my quadra in my quadra the quadra is not the four personalities that you have in your head the quadra is different than that by the way <clears throat> it's for those of you that were confused right. about that uh so i i guess with regards to that so uh, the gateway functions feel most comfortable it's the gateway right. functions it's the the first the fourth the fifth and the eighth function those are the gateway functions you need to focus on developing them in order to have a better understanding of where you are in the four sides of your mind basically that's the whole point Right. The gateway function is everything. Mm-hmm. For sure. Mm-hmm. Well, I would say, yeah, just be aware of your gateway functions. And I would say if when you're in your ego, you will feel most comfortable. When you're in your subconscious or your shadow, you'll feel a drain. And I'm pretty sure you'll be able to identify when you're in your super ego because then you start just acting like a psychopath. Um, so, yeah. When you're acting like an INTJ or an uh, ISFJ, you'll feel a mental drain, an emotional drain. You won't feel as good. You'll feel a little bit more stressed out. And that's how you can determine whether you're in your ego or not. And you can use that to base how you're in your element. And I think that should cover that question. Yep. Agreed. Um, Questions for C.S. Joseph. See, it's Joseph. Um, are ISFPs more likely to become artists? Yes. <laughs> most likely. Most of all uh, the types. I'm an INTP, and I basically haven't done anything with my life in the past two years or since finishing high school. Now I'm 19, uh, diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder, a major depressive episode. My mom is nice and enables my negative behavior. How can I force myself to get off my ass and start doing instead of thinking? Uh, you have to focus on helping somebody. If you're not helping someone, you're not going to get smarter, nor you're going to be motivated. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to like tell everyone that you're a bad person and that you're uncaring. Right. In front of if you. You're an ITP. I'm going to publicly humiliate you. Yeah. I'm if just you're an ITP at 19 <laughs> and have uh, generalized anxiety disorder, maybe you probably play too much video games. So perhaps. Go for a walk every day. Stop the dopamine. Um, Your SI yeah. child is addicted to dopamine. And um, make sure um, that, uh, like I said, you got to make sure you're helping people. If you're not helping somebody, you're basically kind of worthless as an INTP. I'm sorry, but that's a fact. You need to be helping somebody. You got to help somebody. All right. Uh, best advice for an ENTP ISFJ marriage. ENTP ISFJ marriage. My best advice ever for this marriage. <laughs> Get a divorce. <laughs> All right. I will give my best advice ever for an ENTP ISFJ marriage, assuming that these two types are 100% accurate in this typing for this pairing. Okay. Are you ready? Here it is. Get a divorce. <laughs> yeah, that's just being read like a book, Chase. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry for ruining your punchline, though. Oh, yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm not even going to... No. You don't want to have that relationship. Sorry. No, thank you. It's like, oh, you make me so uncomfortable. Well, you make me so uncomfortable. Well, you make me feel guilty all the time. Well, you make me feel guilty all the time. Well, I don't think this is good. Neither do I. It's like, great. Well, I don't want that. You never want anything. Well, you never want anything. It's like a horrible marriage. No, thank you. 
please get a divorce. Yeah. Do our do do the ra do our race a favor, and get a divorce. Yeah, well, I, I would say that if you got you established the relationship to the point of where an ENTP and an ISFJ got married, unless it was like an arranged marriage or something, the chances are that one of the people in that relationship is mistyped or in their shadow from, say, a depression or maybe pushed into their subconscious. So I, I consider looking at the type grid and reevaluating whether that's an actual marriage, yep. or whether both people are typed correctly. Because usually people won't get that far if there were those two types. Yep. Um, what happens when TI Hero is proven wrong? Can you give examples of both ISTPs and INTPs? They go, no! Yes, I could provide examples when TI Hero is wrong. Uh, so right, you're wrong. Imagine an ISTP with a relationship with a fellow TIFE user, and they're like, I'm right all the time. I don't have to change, you know? It's like they're singing the man's prayer from Red Green. You ever watch Red Green? It's an amazing Canadian uh, co comedy show. And they have the men's prayer, and I quote, I'm a man, and I could change if I have to, I guess. Yep. <clears throat> Which is the SP approach to manhood, apparently, because they don't want to change and they're just kind of just going to do whatever they want, basically, because of introvert intuition, inferior, and child. And uh, T.I. Hero, what's an example of being wrong? Well, for example, they think they're absolutely right about something because they're completely lacking input. They don't have all the information, and they're making decisions based on bad information. That's literally it. And then all of a sudden, their ISTJ wife shows up and is like, to this ISTP, uh, you might want to think about it this way. And they're like, oh, oh, okay. And then... All of a sudden, they're on a new uh, stream of thought, and then they're able to solve the problem because they've been thinking and thinking and thinking for four hours about how to solve a problem. She just walks by, looks at what she's doing, makes one suggestion. You might want to think about it this way, and then walks off, and it solves the problem instantly. It's because of lack of expert thinking input. This happens to me all the time. Yes, I'm TI parent, and TI heroes are pretty smart too. I'm a pretty smart guy, but if I don't have the right input, I could be a very smart guy making very stupid decisions, basically. So. Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and Super Chat. Is that a Super Chat? Did I see that? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> I see it. Max G94 asks, can some ESTPs appear to not put as much effort into their appearance on their belongings, like messy car, room, etc.? Uh, yes, because uh, they live in so much in the moment, and their next uh, moment, because they often seek dopamine, for example. Wow, tonight's a dopamine night. They often seek dopamine in such a way where uh, it's possible that, uh, you know, that's more important to them and that's more in the moment to them. It's more real to them and uh, cleaning up their home is not necessarily very real to them at that point in time, so they won't do it. ENTPs have a similar right. problem as well. But uh, it's, Jordan Peterson's book was uh, written for e, uh, ENTPs. Yeah. Sorry, ESTPs. That's right. Clean your room. That's right. Clean your room, ESTPs. Yep. All right, next question. Which types or interaction styles have the most difficulty with public speaking? Is it initiating versus responding, a movement versus control, or a combination? Uh, FE inferiors oh. have the hardest uh, time uh, public speaking due to that social anxiety that they have. The second most difficult are SE inferiors because of performance anxiety. Those are the types that really, really struggle with it. Thirdly, it would be TE inferiors because they're afraid that people would think less of them, etc., uh, and the like. Um, and uh, any inferiors, they, they're fine with it. They, it doesn't really bother them that much. So, but yeah, it's based on. Can the you ag function. argue? Can you argue why Japan is an NJ society, not SJ, which most people seem to think it is? Everyone thinks that Japan is an SJ society because of bushido and uh, those kinds of uh, uh, cultural things. But that was such a, a foundation in the past that they became an NJ society focusing on what each individual wants and, uh, and following a specific structure to reach those goals. You see that with business at, uh, all the time, etc. cetera. Uh, everything is compartmentalized. Everything has a place. Everything is allowable. SJ society is very affiliative. It's very authoritarian. Uh, you can't do certain things because it's morally objectionable or wrong. Uh, or uh, you look into, uh, you know, J Japanese society, you can do anything in Japan. There's a specific time and place for it, but you could do anything in Japan, basically, like literally anything you want. See what I'm saying? So situations like that. 
um, that uh, you want you want to be aware of. So, right. Uh, super chat from Kale asks, "Where can I meet ENTPs?" Ooh, where you can meet um, ENTPs uh, at home in their man cave, avoiding the world because they can't trust anybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, check your emails. Look for one from a Nigerian prince. That's probably an ENTP from Nigeria. It, or a Nyarjan prince, one of those too, Jeb? A Nyarjan <laughs> one in New Eden? No, 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 no. The only two Nyarjan princes I know is an INTJ and an ESTJ. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. I guess the ENTPs aren't allowed to be Nyarjan princes. Uh, yeah. So that being said, uh, where to find ENTPs? <clears throat> um, computer labs. Meetup groups? Uh, meetup groups Google all apps. the time, especially anything that has anything to do with debate or speeching, uh, giving speeches. Um, also, on our uh, Discord server, shameless plug. Yep, on our dis <laughs> Discord server, great. Uh, hmm. You won't really find them at bars unless they're bringing an entourage with them. Uh, ENTPs right. usually have their entourage when they're going out. Because it makes them more comfortable. They like to go out with their own friends and not necessarily go out alone. I don't like going out unless I have a plus one or plus many with me. That's just kind of my thing. Otherwise, which kind of yeah. sucks like from a dating point of view because then it's like, uh, I have to go out in order to like date somebody, but I don't want to go out because I don't already have a plus one or an entourage. So then it just becomes the chicken or the egg. So, okay, I'm going to default to being a workaholic. Yeah, right. that's that's basically how it goes. It's a catch twenty two. It's a chicken or an egg effect, right? So, right. <clears throat> you can also meet ENTPs uh, on uh, dating apps, and uh, typically the creepiest extrovert you can find. There you go. There's an ENTP. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm I'd also say the experience. library. <laughs> I'd say the library, but the library's kind of going out of fashion. Library's going out of fashion for sure. Um, also, ENTPs, because they're developing their ISFJ subconscious, you will find them on hikes, you will find them on trails consistently. Hiking is like literally one of my most favorite hobbies. I, I would do it every weekend if I could. I absolutely love it uh, because it just gives me time to focus. I have visions while I'm on the trail. Uh, I listen, I eat audiobooks like crazy. Um, all ENTPs have visions, by the way. It's Expert Intuition Hero. Uh, we just need that solitude to really just kind of enrich ourselves and be better for ourselves to that end. It's uh, very important as a result. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and uh, no, I, I am not married. No. Um, okay, so I'm divorced like two years ago. <clears throat> Okay, uh, yeah. Uh, where else to meet ENTPs, Jab? Uh, you meet them at work, but I wouldn't recommend getting in a relationship with someone at work that's like really irresponsible, even though I've yeah, done it like once. Yeah, saying you don't, you don't, S-H-I-T, where you eat. Yeah, you don't. You don't do that where you eat. You don't. No. So, yeah. Um, what's <laughs> another place? Uh, not university the in... University in a STEM field or a psychology field or something abstract? No, 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 no. You'll find them there, of course. Yeah, I mean, anywhere that there's a possibility for debate or discussion or intellectual conversation, that's because that's what ENTPs want. They just want intellectual conversation to talk to people. It's because they want to be understood. No one understands them. So they just want, they're seeking to find someone who, who understands them. That's all they need, really. Just somebody who understands them. That would be nice, right? Um, and someone who trusts them, right? But, uh, <clears throat> but so many people are um, you know, untrustworthy. There's another place you're going to meet ENTPs, the cinema. ENTPs love the cinema. I love the cinema. It's like my favorite thing to do. I love going there. And most people just kind of don't. I'm literally that guy who will go to the movie theater by myself. Like I do that. So... It, uh, all right. Yeah. Uh, also, e um, ENTPs really like yoga. I forgot about that. They're very into yoga. And yeah, but so is arts. everyone else. Yeah, true. But just find the one that's you wearing all black, and that's the ENTP. <laughs> you go to a yoga class, and like 90% of the people there are going to be ESTJs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's a bit of an exaggeration, but. I, I, I'm exaggerating for comedic effect. 
Yes, that's right. I go out on solo dates. I take myself out on a date. Yes, I do. I go hiking, and then I stop hiking, and I go to my favorite wine bar, and I order my favorite dessert at my favorite wine bar, and then I go watch a movie all by myself, and then I go home and I go to bed. That's what I do. So He takes himself to bed. That's right. I take <laughs> myself to bed. That's right, Jab. Thank you for getting that little jab in there. Thank you very much. All right, next question. Uh... <clears throat> Um, you often speak of interplay between extroverted and introfunction, introverted functions as follows. FE feel, uh, feeds off emotional signals and FI and of TI, uh, sorry, FE feeds off the emotional signals of FI, TE feeds off the facts of TI, SC and SI in reverse, where SI wants to receive the experience of SC, question mark. Yes. And is there interplay between NE and NI give and receive manner? Mm -hmm. yep. Yes, of course, because NE wants to absorb the willpower of NI, which is why NE goes out of their way to let the NI user do whatever they want. It's all about choices. The NE user gives choices. And shout out to Maddie Bojangles, who explained it so well today at our meetup group. Fantastic quote, good sir. Fantastic. Because fantastic, sir. Very, very, very fantastic. And let me explain to you what exactly he said. He's like extroverted intuition. We sit right here on the hill, and then the NI user has a big sniper rifle, right? And they have lots of targets. And then the NE user is the spotter. The spotter finds the specific targets that they should shoot. That way, we have the ideal outcome. And then the sniper rifle is aimed and fired. And then all of a sudden, there's some guys, enemies sneaking up on the NI user while the spotter is telling, oh, that one and that one and that one and then all of a sudden the spotter stands up pulls out knives and then goes after all of the people that all the enemies who are coming close to the sniper rifle position and protect the ni user and then after which come back then spot some more help the ni user shoot the appropriate targets perfect explanation absolutely love it thank you maddie bojangles for that amazing explanation earlier today during the meetup group hashtag shameless plug on the meetup group uh but be that as it may and also like i'm moving so uh i'll still show up to like the bay area meetup but like i i am in the process of moving so like who knows like how that's going to go but anyhow but yes, it's all about helping the NI user, specifically an INTJ or an INFJ, for example, to hit the right targets, to, to, to have the right goals. We provide them options. We provide them choices. We provide them with better fates, better futures. And in exchange, they want us. We want to be desired. Any users like to be desired. It's very important to any users. Being desired is super mega important. So... Mm -hmm. Next. Next is. Sorry. Yes, this is Jimmy. This is Jimmy the Bonsai. This is Jimmy. Yes. Uh, AKA Slim Jim. So. Slim Jim. Slim Jim. Um, what are we up to? Uh, the meetup group, uh, I is think, is on our. I think is in one of the links in the description, and then you go to our website, and then it has like the meetup thing on our social media page. All right. We got another we got another super chat. I love so this. how how can INTJs politely communicate communicate to ESFJs, healthy slash unhealthy, about the need to concentrate without socializing and distractions? Most in my circle do not seem to be sensitive to the use of time. How can INTJs politely communicate to ESFJs, healthy unhealthy, about the need to concentrate without socializing and distractions? Most of my circle do not seem to be sensitive to the use of time. All right, so Taj Marie, how do you handle this? Uh, is, um, <laughs> yes, yes, Jay, the, the bonsai's name is Jimmy. Jimmy, AKA Slim Jim. Uh, so uh, what you do, Taj Marie, is that you explain to the ESFJ that they could be way more supportive towards you if they would just give you time to concentrate. Because if you do not concentrate, then you're not able to be productive. If you do not have that necessary alone time, you're going to product, not going to be productive, and then you're going to feel bad. Like I don't feel good about wasting time right now, and I'm not saying that you're wasting my time. But what I am saying is, is that I need to focus. I need to concentrate. If I don't focus, concentrate, nothing's going to get done, and I need to be left alone. And if not, then I'm going to feel bad. I don't want to feel bad about myself. And then the ESFJ is like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. It's my duty to make sure that you feel good." So, okay, oh I'm going to let you do what you want. 
and and have some time together because it's my duty. But I, I really think you'd want to hear these things or you'd probably feel good about what I have to say, but not right now because you said so. And thank you very much for telling me. I, I, I really appreciate it. I feel so special that you'd be willing to tell that to me. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate that, but I really need to focus and I'd feel really good about it if you decided to leave me alone right now. We'll talk later. That's basically how to uh, cope how to uh, about do that, you know. Um, okay. Uh, let me think. All right. Is it possible for more highly regarded temperaments to feel very suppressed in their own society? For example, SJs in USA, NJs in Japan. Suppressed? Yeah. What do you mean? Are they saying SJs are suppressed in the USA? No, I think they're saying, is it possible for that to happen? Mm, it can. Well, there's always going to be niches and cliques and whatnot where they could feel suppressed in. Well, ISTJs, like, for example, um, uh, I, I, I knew an ISTJ at one point in time. I mean, my daughter is an ISTJ, but uh, I, knew, um, I knew an ISTJ who really, um, really struggled, uh, basically, uh, because they're like, you know, I have Effie Trickster. I'm not able to socially handle these things. Everyone just thinks I'm a dick all the time when I'm just trying to do my duty, just trying to do the right thing. But no one lets me do the right thing. This is horrible. And now I feel like a horrible person, even though I'm not. You know, it can it can be really hard for ISTJs in this society. Uh, but again, for the most part, ISTJs kind of have it easy because they can just go like become a doctor or a lawyer or whatever. And then they're just good to go essentially, because the entire education system is built around them, essentially. Right. So, yeah, just to kind of give you an idea, it, not really, I'd say, just it's it's not really between an NJ society or SJ society. Uh, if they're if they're kind of feeling in that regard, they're probably just on the wrong path, and that's how I'd answer that. Right, L let's, let's pick up some pace. I think we can get through a very big chunk of questions really quickly. Okay. How important, are perceiving, how important are perceiving functions in a platonic relationship? How important are perceiving function in a platonic relationship? They're very important in any relationship, quite honestly. Although perceiving functions are necessary for gathering information and understanding where the person is coming from, there you go. But if a platonic relationship lacks any sexual intimacy whatsoever, you need to have compatible perception functions in order to have any form of sexual compatibility because compatibility perception functions is sexual compatibility, just like decision-making function compatibility is emotional compatibility. So... There you go. Yeah. How compatible is a relationship, romantic or otherwise, between an INTP and an ENFP? <laughs> How? What? How compatible is a relationship, romantic or otherwise, between an INTP and an ENFP? That's oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Jab, uh, are you uh, are you going to be able to anticipate my response to this question? Um, if you had a divorce? guess, what, what what do you think I'd say? Get a divorce. No. I would say that that uh, relationship is... In the dumpster? Pretty close. I will answer. Dumpster fire? Pure cancer. <laughs> close enough. Close enough. That's right. Avoid that relationship. Like It's like, oh, I could make you feel good. Yeah, but you're giving me a bad experience. Like, no. Now, it's like that INTP is actually an ENTJ. And in that case, that would be a really good relationship. So Right. Well, I, I'm thinking INTP and ENFP could get along non-romantically yeah. a little bit. Asper aspirational FE could yep. work. Yep. Jimmy agrees. Next. Jimmy agrees. Uh, do your cognitive functions have any correlation to what you find hilarious? Um, yes, uh, SE users like to have uh, be pra give practical jokes, especially SE child and SE inferior, uh, and then SI child and SI inferior like to receive those experiences from the SE user. That's why literally every SE inferior out there, especially uh, uh, an INTJ SE's inferior, is the literal funniest thing in the whole wide world. They are hilarious, and I can't stop but think that they're just bloody brilliant every time they use their dark humor to that end. So right. Yeah. 
Do you believe certain temperaments or certain types are more inclined to be smarter than others? And if so, which temperaments or types do you see being considered smarter than others and less intelligent than others? Giving a short explanation for your, de your definition of smartness would be helpful. My definition yeah. <laughs> of smartness uh, would be helpful. Um, I would say TI takes the cake, but as I learned earlier this year uh, and grew, um, TE parent is extremely necessary for TI parent functionality. Uh, it just it just needs to be there, even with TE hero giving proper um, proper uh, assistance in that regard. Without that, then it's potentially an issue because TI really needs proper input and needs to have the right information and things well researched in order to, for proper decision making. So at the end of the day, they have to really go together. Um, now, TE is at risk of getting caught up in their beliefs. The good thing about TE parent is they have TI critic, which demands verification, which is excellent. Thank God for that. But the thing is also like TI parent has TE critic, which demands proper research okay. at the same time. So it, they mm -hmm. kind of go together. They're not really uh, apart. I can't really say that, you know, someone's more intelligent than the others. However, technically, statistically, the higher the TI, the higher the IQ. But that's not always 100% true. I've known tons of TE users, especially TE childs, that have been able to get into Mensa consistently. Right. Yeah, I would never join Mensa. Okay. You don't have to join Mensa. Just, just sounds like a recruiting ground for uh, MK Ultra or something. <laughs> okay, I, I had no idea. You know, it's kind of interesting that 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 uh, form of science was birthed out of Jungian analytical psychology as it was developed <laughs> by the Russians and turned it into socionics. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting how that works. Anyway. Yeah. Exactly. Next. Uh, do you believe? Oh, which types are more likely to get good at, to be good at video games, SI or SE users? Both. Uh, it depends. Uh, so I'd say SE users would be SE users, more better. SE users are but better. SI would, yes, but SI if, would play, and then you've got that experience versus talent. Yeah. Uh, so um. The answer to that question is yes. Uh, no. Uh, so uh, video games. Uh, I'm glad that I'm glad someone asked. This is a great question. Okay. So, um, SE users uh, dominate video games all the time, especially NI heroes and SE parents, NI child. So ISFP, ISTP, INFJ, and INTJ dominate at video games, uh, probably more than any other type. However. There are some instances where the SI user can absolutely dominate as well if they have intel on the physical locations of the other people on the map. Whereas an SE user, they have faster reaction time because they're like tacticians. The SI user is kind of more of like a strategist in that regard. And as long as they could see the enemy coming, they could take him out, right? That's why typically SI users typically go out and hide, whereas the SE users run around hunting them essentially and that's why the si users typically lose however if you're playing a game like dust 514 which is the first person shooter uh, for eve online back in the day you could get this amazing item called a scanner that could scan and you could see the positions of players through walls and as they're coming around the wall you could have your railgun ready charged up and just pop them right in the head as they come around the corner you always know where the enemy is ahead of time and in that case the si user would dominate not the se users uh, now, also, another good example, I used to play Halo. I, did, I hosted Halo tournaments when I was in high school and whatnot. And I'd have like this, um, we'd connect two Xboxes together, or no, four Xboxes together, and have uh, uh, 16 player duels in like uh, the cabin on my parents' back, back five. It was amazing. But I could always screen watch, and I always knew where everyone was because I was screen watching. I always knew where there was a fight going down. And then because I was screen watching, Yes, I was a dirty screen watcher. I would just kill everybody. I would just because my extroverted intuition always knew where everyone was on the position of the map. After my introverted sensing memorized everything on the map, and I always knew if I saw on one screen where a fight was going on, I knew where to go. I had intel at all times. So, if the SI user has unlimited intel, they will win. If they do not have Chase intel, they will camper. lose. It's that much. Chase confirmed a dirty camper. Okay, thank you. Thank you. That's what I did. I camped, I camped dangerously delicious in World of Warcraft when I played Wrath of the Lich King. I was a death knight at the time. People were forced to go into Lake uh, Wintergrasp to, uh, to fish, and they'd have to 
to take their weapon off, put on their fishing rod, and start fishing in the lake. And then I just kill them while they're vulnerable and do it over and over and over again and prevent them from taking that quest. And that quest would force them to have them to keep coming back. And then they fly in people to stop me. But then I had like a, like a, like priests invisible in the bushes and whatnot that would show up and start healing me while I just continued to dominate them. Oh my god! It was amazing. And they hated That's, me so much. That sounds like. That statement sounds like it could be taken so badly out of context. Like, I had a bunch of priests hiding in the bushes, so if this kid came fishing, we could take him out. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> okay. All right. None of that, please. None of that. <laughs> oh, I'm just waiting for uh, the, the delay to catch up and see people's responses. <laughs> Oh, all right. Let's go on to the next question. Um, do you believe that certain temperaments or certain types are more inclined to be smarter than others? And if so, which temperaments or types would you see being considered smarter than others and less intelligent than others? Oh, we already did that. Yeah, too. we have a we have a super chat, I think. Oh yeah, we do too. Uh, given that developing better charisma and social skills is important, how can SI inferiors practice or learn to give better experiences to others? Uh, it's not about giving be better people better experiences. It's about making them feel good, giving them a better fate, giving them a better future, or making them uh, think about things differently. This is what Tony Robbins does consistently. Uh, and he does this by inserting thoughts, creating starts uh, for other people so that they have those plans to start the things that they need to start. It's very important, right? And they can go in that direction. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's kind of how, uh, how I'd go about that. Um, and it's not about giving other people a good experience, just making them feel good or making them think better, help make them smarter or uh, giving them a better future. That's it. Okay. Uh... Uh, how can the types build and utilize willpower or self-discipline? Um... How can they, well, when you have willpower, you can just will yourself through like any obstacle and whatnot. Uh, Self-discipline is basically enduring any obstacle. So uh, it, the, uh, the willpower is to find the best path forward, while uh, uh, discipline is to just take all the hits. To quote Rocky, life is not about the blows you land. Life is about the amount of hits you can take. And he's right about mm -hmm. that. That's why I've always focused on developing my self-discipline and my personal endurance because the more hits I can take, the more I can outlast any hardship that is sent my way. That includes people who try to self-sabotage or to sabotage me, people who try to destroy my reputation or my credibility, all of those things. And instead, what I do, it's just like, okay, well, I could take the hits. I'm not, give, I'm not getting down. Oh, I'm in the ditch right now? Fine, I'm going to stand back up because it is written and I quote, a righteous man will rise seven times. He will fall seven times, but then he will rise again. But a wicked man will stumble when calamity strikes. What does that mean? That means a man, a real man, a mature man, a man who has the mature masculine or a woman who has a mature feminine, if they get hit down in their life, they will stand up and they will keep going. Everyone goes in the ditch. Everyone, if you don't know this, watch RSD Motivation's video on YouTube titled The Truth About Life, okay? And he's like, life is really tough. Everyone's in the ditch. It's up to you to get out of the ditch. So the really the people with the mature masculine, the mature feminine, will be able to get themselves out of the ditch and keep going. And they may even return the ditch seven times, but then they're going to get up and keep going. Whereas the wicked man, the twisted man, the man who is entangled by dopamine, for example or addictions, sensuality, illicit relationships, those people, they get to stay in the ditch because the ditch is literally their idol and they don't even know. Wow. That's why I get to say that ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is hell. That's how I'd answer that question. Right. Um, as an... IFJ and using your four sides of the mind model, when I go into my ETP side, does this mean my FE can be both pessimistic and childlike, playful at the same time during communication? Yes, it can or does be. FE switch, or does FE switch to a childlike, playful, and stay or dwell there for a while? Yep. I ask because I'm in a one-off. Gone? 
your cognitive functions can switch roles, but remember, if your cognitive transition is it a full transition, or is it a partial transition? Are you going in and out of the sides of your mind at multiple times? What if you're in your subconscious one second, then you're unconscious the next, and you're super ego, and then you're just going back and forth, pop, 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 and then your cognitive functions are changing roles consistently like a machine, and you're getting all that information out right. all at once. That's what I do. That's what I like right. to do. Because then I can just shift right into my super ego and just be like, oh, very nice. I'm here to torture all of you people for your own good. I very much enjoy it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, well, the rest of that question was just adding more context, but I think we got the answer, so I don't yep. think it's that important. Um, do you think it's possible for an INTP female and ESTP male relationship to function? Absolutely, yes. Well, no, I thought you said ESFP. Um, there's minute sexual compatibility there but there's zero emotional compatibility i do not recommend that relationship very much and anytime they get in a fight or any they have any problem the only way that relationship is going to be okay is they have to solve everything by sex that's it good luck doing that in old age good luck yeah how can enfps best develop their subconscious how can what how can ENFPs best develop their subconscious? How can ENFPs best develop the subconscious? Well, they need to read. That would be nice. And they need to give themselves experiences and go outside the fear of the unknown as much as possible. Right. Um... Let's, get, uh, let's get some more of those platinum and uh, silver questions in, Jeb. Nah, I reckon we uh, get some more regular questions in and then do them all at the end. So all right, that way we don't switch from regular to fair platinum enough. to regular. We got this. YouTube. So we'll get some more in right at the end. Um, so yeah, what are some... Uh, I'm an ENTJ and I find in a work environment, ISFPs are the easiest types for me to work with or be in charge of. I have a lot of less friction working with them compared to working with an INTJs, ISTJs, INTPs. How is it possible when ISFPs is supposed to be the complete opposite of my type? So that's because of high camaraderie. And when you have a high camaraderie relationship, you can actually learn from each other and be a huge benefit to each other. But it's a very shoulder to shoulder relationship. It's not really a relationship that you could like get intimacy or really on a deep level of trust friend wise, which could be an issue. So just be aware of that. Um, that could be a problem uh, for sure. Okay. Um, what are some career choices for an INTP? Uh, career choices for INTP, that could be engineering, that could be design, uh, design work, engineering, um, hmm, uh, video game development, animation, uh, marketing, basically anything. They could kind of do anything provided that they actually are helping other people. That includes being a car mechanic. I actually know somebody who is an INTP who is amazing at cars because they're just doing it from the position of, uh, you know, handling you know those things etc uh jab uh we got about uh, 15 minutes left so just give me a heads up okay all right so i'll just pin this and let's go to the second run through of the platinum let's do the second yeah. run and then we're going to do uh we're going to do some youtube questions all right all right why is entp the most introverted extrovert when ENTJ has two behind the scenes types as the sides of the mind oh that's a great question mellow awesome uh, the thing is, though, is because uh, an ENTJ, when it is a cognitive transition into the ISFP, it's still an SC user and it still gives other people a good experience, even in a social situation, because it's two SC users. You have the ENTJ ego, you have the ISFP subconscious, even though it's behind the scenes, they're still engaging with people because of introverted intuition and giving other people a good experience. And then because of that, they're able to be very, very social as a result. Whereas an ENTP does not have that advantage because of the lack of extroverted sensing and you have their ego and their subconscious at the same time, basically uh, leading into, oh, I'm an expert, I go in an extroverted situation, but now I'm behind the scenes because like no one is initiating with me, no one is paying attention to me, no one cares, Effie child, no one cares, uh, I'm really uncomfortable right now, I don't know these people, no one's initiating whatsoever, no one's introducing me to anyone, so I'm just gonna stand here and pretend to be like a wallflower for like the next 15 minutes, etc. and then after that, uh, if I get even more uncomfortable, I'm gonna start making everyone around me uncomfortable, or I'm just gonna leave entirely, right? And because of that, right. 
That's why ENTPs are the most introverted of the extroverts because of that lack of SE while simultaneously, wow, we might've lost the feed. That's just great. Oh man, wow. hold on. I think I could fix it. Stand by. I made a critical error in judgment because I didn't plug in the power. I guess that's what happens. No, let's see here. We got it oh, figured out. The stream hasn't. The stream uh, the hasn't stream's died still yet. up. Yeah, the stream's still up. It's fine. Stand by. It's coming back. And hitting that button. There it goes. Back in business. And then we're loading. Loading, loading, loading. All right. And come on. Almost. Almost. GoPro. Ding, ding, ding. And pop. Back. We're good. Awesome. And back. Cool. Okay. All right. Uh, next question. Okay. Uh, what should we actually say to people who won't shut up about citing your sources and people who act like you can't know anything unless you have a degree in it? Uh, those are usually TE inferiors because they don't want to change their belief systems to match the fact that I'm actually right. Uh, <laughs> Um, and then you could publicly shame them. That would be fun. Oh, don't do that. Uh, no, actually, uh, if you need to look at my sources, my source material, just go to the books section on my website, csjoseph.life, click books. Anything in the psychology section is basically my source material on uh, all these things. The thing is, too, there's some of the material that I do have that I do not share the source material with because I am legally bound to not share that information because the people that help develop it do not want to be known, do not want to be found, won't, don't want to have anything to do with it, basically, because they don't want to have to deal with the repercussions of like, you know, quote, being famous and whatnot. Uh, and a lot of the material I've also developed uh, from myself as a result of my own research into the science. So just understand that like not 100% of everything I know came from an external source, FYI. It came right. through experimentation and uh, re my own results, as well as anecdotal evidence and uh, things that I've been able to do on, on a regular basis and consistently prove. And then I teach others how to use those techniques and then they see it's true themselves consistently. A great example of this would be the people who show up to my meetup group, etc. So yeah, that's how I'd answer that question. All right. Um, how can I deal with transferring feelings from one person to another because they are the same personality type? These could be positive feelings or negative. I don't have, I don't like having a bias when I meet new people. I like it influences my. I feel like it influences my opinion about them. So, for example, if there are two FI users, uh, you want to get an FE user as a third party to do that and converse between the two of them, right. and that person will translate. If there are two FE users, you need an FI user for translation. That's all you need. You just need to get someone else with the cognition that can be the bridge between. Done. Cool. Oh. Uh, how can I optimize and make my ESFP function healthy? When it's in the shadow function ISFJ, I tend to really emphasize my shadow functions. In a bad lighting, I go full-blown negative ISFJ stress mode to the max. And in terms of dating, how would, about, how would I be able to know my ISFJ partner is good for me if I am so pessimistic about it? Is this person an point? ISFJ or what? Like, I don't understand what they're at, like what type this person is. So this person is an ESFP ego, and they're talking about when they're in their shadow ISFJ. Oh. They tend to really emphasize their shadow functions in a bad lighting where they go full negative and ISFJ stress mode to the max. In terms of dating, how would they be able to know their ISFJ partner is good for them if they're so pessimistic about it, even though the match is perfect? Uh, the If the ISFJ is willing to criticize you and verify your beliefs, if the ISFJ is willing to give you freedom of choice, if they're not giving you any choices, you know they have a serious problem with you. Uh, if, you are, uh, if they're not making you feel good, uh, that could be an issue as well. Um, and, uh, I don't recommend that either. Uh, so just like, be careful on that standpoint. Uh, and then also the ISFJ would, would you, if they're not complaining about, if they're not complaining about anything, you're doing a great job. Like seriously, if you're an ESFP and you're dating an ISFJ and the ISFJ is not complaining, you're doing great because they're not necessarily right. always going to give you recognition, uh, for what good things that you're doing. Although sometimes they will, they might be thoughtful in that way and they should be thoughtful in that way, but they have pessimistic FV so that it just really comes out in thoughtful actions. Uh, and maybe because of that, some words of affirmation is what they'll offer you as a result. But the thing is at the end of the day, uh, ISI heroes are all about complaining. And if they're not complaining, you're doing fantastic. And that's how you know. Wow. Thoughtful. Yep. How thoughtful of you. How thoughtful. Um, how does one know if they're highly integrated with the other side of their mind? 
e.g. INFJ being integrated with their shadow and or sub. Thanks. E e.g. an INTJ? INFJ. Uh, they're helping others. Uh, they're making other human beings stronger. Uh, they're not being selfish and corrupt. They're getting the losers out of their life, uh, specifically behaving very maturely as a result. If they're a man, they understand king, warrior, magician, lover. If they are a woman, they understand queen, mother, matron, lover. And they're able to adhere to each of those archetypes specific to the mature masculine and mature feminine. And they're exercising those archetypes as such within all three of the main sides of their mind before they go into the superego and begin integrating the superego within. Uh, Jab, we have uh, five minutes. We have five minutes, Mr. Jab. All right. YouTube questions. Get your questions in real quick. Da, 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 da. Let's see if I can scroll up and find something. Why can't we make fun of INFP? No one says you can't. Why can't we I make fun of INFP? Make... Definitely make fun of them if you can. <laughs> no, just kidding. Uh, they're really sensitive. That's why INFPs are extremely sensitive. Like the whole, the entire premise of highly sensitive people, HSPs. That's literally every INFP in the entire world. And then they get mad at you because when you're like pointing out that they're so sensitive. Fair enough. I go out of my way to like not make them mad at me, but then they ask me to tell them the truth and then I tell them the truth and then they get mad at me. Like that literally just happened to me last week and it was really sad. Even though I really liked the INFP. I thought they were really cool, but they asked me for the truth and I told them the truth. They didn't like what I had to hear and they got mad at me for it. And now they don't like me anymore. And then they're like, oh, well, he doesn't have any credibility. Oh, he doesn't cite his sources. Oh, what does he know? You know what I'm saying? And it's like, but I liked you. And then you asked me to tell you the truth and I told you the truth, but now you're behaving like that. Okay, great, fine, great, par for the course. Like every other INFP in my entire life treats me, except Domes. Domes is the dopest. Outside of Domes, you know, kind of a bit, a little difficult. So next question. Uh, you talked a lot about dopamine addiction in this episode. Thoughts on NoFap? Uh, uh, why does this camera keep crashing? Sorry about that, guys. It's not ah, so well, you can still answer the question. I think they can still hear us. Yeah, yeah, they can still hear us. Um, I am very against NoFap. I mean, I know people keep asking me about that. They keep asking me if I'm a member of NoFap. Uh, I am against NoFap. That's dumb. Why would you do that? You need to be emptying your prostate on a regular basis or you're exposing yourself to some serious inflammation, especially if you've been sexually active at least once. What are you doing? And yeah, however, as my friend John Brisson over at FixYourGut.com has noted, if every time you basically, uh, you know, are not adhering to NoFap, uh, you're losing zinc. So make sure that you're eating a lot of foods with zinc properly. If not, then I recommend you supplement with zinc. Uh, in terms of the particular kind of zinc to supplement with, I recommend going to their recommendations at fixyourgut.com and checking out their supplement recommendations. You can actually look up a zinc article. Just type in zinc in the search bar and you'll find an article on zinc that explains all that for you. But yes, I am 100% against no fap. So yeah, there you go. Next question. What, what about, oh, let, let's be equal opportunity here. What about for women? Would you recommend they do no fap? Uh, I do not recommend that for women either. Women, especially women, need to be as uh, in tune with their bodies as much as possible. That way they have all the information mentally from which to communicate with their partners for the ideal sexual experience that leads to mutual simultaneous orgasms. Other than that, that's basically about it. It's just them basically uh, you know, being responsible with knowing themselves and as much as men need to take care of the plumbing. So as we got some super chats in there, Mr. Jab. Yeah, we do. Meta S asks... I'm a 19P who had a five-year toxic relationship with an INFP. Oof. Now Oof. fighting an uphill battle to get back the three-year-old daughter I raised alone for the last year. Could you explain why the INTP INFP is such a bad match? Uh, because uh, they're trying to out-selfish each other with their own comfort. My comfort's more important than your comfort. You never want anything. You never make decisions. You're not willing to commit to me. Oh, I'm really committed. No, you're not. Uh, you know, and then uh, the TI user just slams the TI user consistently, making them feel bad, and the FI user consistently slams the uh, T the INTP, making them feel guilty. That's what happens. Well, and not only that, the INFP is going to think that they're a better person than the INTP, and that's where you're going to get into such a dilemma, like uh, the INFP trying to take your three-year-old daughter off you because she thinks she's a better mother. Or yeah, exactly. Mother. Exactly. Oh, he thinks he's a better father, sorry. <laughs> he thinks he's a better mother. Never mind. Whatever. So, yeah. Um, 
I, I, I think what you need to do is uh, you need to build your own TE source, uh, get yourself a good lawyer, and basically just write down and brainstorm beforehand like why you're a better parent. I wish you the best of luck in your family court battle. Yep. Uh, Marky Mark just gave four ninety nine. Let's see. Have we got any other questions? Thank you, Mark. Mark. Whoa. Um, oh, God. There's people talking about taking zinc tablets to fat. Oh, gosh. Make sure you have what some did you protein do, with Chase? that. Make sure you have some protein what with did... that. I'd recommend the Costco uh, protein shakes. <laughs> One every two hours. <laughs> If you want a really fun day. <laughs> what, did, what did you do to this chat chase? Uh, oh, no. <laughs> hey, they asked. Next question. Uh, I, I'm looking. All I see is like talking about fapping and stuff. Okay. Well. Um... All right. One more YouTube question, guys. <laughs> one more YouTube question. First one I see. All right. Are every child's naturally good at public speaking, or am I just an ENTP who is very good at it? Yes, it is very good at public speaking. Very, very good. There's certain famous people who are very famous at public speaking that were ENTPs. So be aware of that. Yes. How can I develop my shadow as an INTJ? Uh, just uh, be opening to taking risks and uh, keep an open mind as much as you can. Don't worry about uh, having everything planned. And just be willing to shoot from the hip sometimes. Don't worry about not shooting from the hip or having a shot in the dark. A shot in the dark is fine. That's how you develop your ENTP shadow. Take that shot in the dark, see where it goes. You know, Just kind of add a little bit of chaos every now and then. Inject some chaos in your life, see what's going to happen. And then see how it pays off for you, basically. That's how you uh, uh, develop your uh, ENTP shadow. So, How many times a day should you fat? Uh, why don't you reset, research that yourself, Mr. Christian? Yeah, and, please research uh, that, that yourself. Although I think the general rule is at a minimum of once every two days. So yeah, yeah, yeah. he asked. <laughs> what? Wow. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you. Wow. And I actually like know who that is. And that makes that even worse that they said that in the chat. <laughs> that makes it even worse. This is not, this is not helpful. Um, relationship advice for INTJ, INTP. Uh, uh, make sure your INTP is helping you and make sure you expect the INTP is going to commit to you instead of like being unsure about committing to you because that's they get really lazy and stuck in their comfort zone. You got to make them uncomfortable if they're not going to have like that lack of commitment. You know what I'm saying? You don't want that to happen to you. So commitment is like a really big deal. So, but yeah. Okay. We are done. Uh, oh, how to fill the void as an uh. INTP. Uh, I don't know. Like uh, go give yourself some new experiences. Go to like a foreign country or something. Learn a new language. Read books in that new language. Do something new. None of this fear of the unknown and no social anxiety. Like let go of it. All right, Jab, we are done for the evening. Thank you all for coming. We'll see you on the next Q&A uh, in one week's time on Sunday. Just a, yes? Yes, just, Mr. Jab? Just a, few quick, just a few quick announcements. We have another article going live on the website, I think. Yes, we do. Is it the, it's the INTJ one, I think. Yes, INTJ article is going to be going out very soon on uh, the website and also our Facebook. We'd love you all to read it. Right. Yes. Anything right, else? Right, this is... Um, uh, let's sell it a little bit. Come on. Um, the article is on uh, what pisses off INTJs, and it's been personally approved by me, so you know it's good. Personally approved by you. That's fantastic, bro. Okay. Well, because because Jab said it, we're obviously uh, we're obviously like uh, in for the winner on this one. Uh, yes, and it was personally approved by Jab, and I also uh, thought it was pretty awesome. So we're gonna get it out to you guys. Uh, that's great. Any other announcements, Jab? Because you're getting in the way between me and dinner right now. <laughs> no? All right, hold on. Did I actually get kicked out of the channel? Oh, I did. I got kicked out of the channel. Derp. All right. So, so any other announcements there, Jeb? No. All right. Uh, just... 
follow us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and social media and retweet us. And... Oh, we did. Don't, a... oh, don't we did... forget. Yep. Go for it. Don't forget to subscribe. I was looking at the analytics earlier and like half the people who regularly watch this channel aren't subscribed. So if you're one of those people, you might as well subscribe. Yeah, please subscribe to the channel, folks. It's like super helpful. We need the numbers uh, uh, and uh, it, 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 it helps us keep track of, you know, uh, analytics so that we know how to better serve this community. So please subscribe and comment. Hit like buttons too, please. We like likes, but we like subscribes more than likes, but we like it all. So, like, give us all the things, please, and we'll keep producing this amazing content for you and continue to grow this community as such. Um, and I was going to mention one oh. other thing, but I don't remember what it was. So continue. Re we will be revamping the Patreon tiers. I think we've already done that, actually. We did um, revamp them, but we're going to be adding a new tier very soon, uh, and yep, with so some really cool, uh, with some cool stuff. So. Right. So the new tier is personal typing from Chase, which you'll get a verified status on the Discord. Um, and then beyond that, go onto Patreon, check out how we've restructured it. We've included the fictional yes, typing. Yes, more people can tier. go to the fictional typing live stream. It's silver tier and above. We had a great fictional uh, typing uh, session yesterday. Thank you, Byte, and uh, uh, some of the other uh, members that were there. Uh, Caitlin was there as well. We had a great time. We typed Brian Griffin. That was great. Uh, he's an INFJ. <laughs> Uh, we also typed Don Vito Corleone uh, from Godfather. Uh, we also typed, uh, gosh, uh, Jim and Pam from The Office. That was really fun, actually. Uh, and they're actually like, yeah. So anyway, uh, they are, um, uh, and also the fictional typing streams, the ones in the past, once you subscribe, you get to re you get to watch the past ones too, right? And they're all on our website, right. etc. So you have all that coverage. You're good to go. Okay, cool. Are we done with the sales pitch? Can I go get something to eat, please? <laughs> yeah. All right. All right cool. uh, that's it. Thanks for coming. All right, folks. You have a good night. Thank you for being here. Uh, we love you very much. Uh, let's keep this going. Uh, and I'll see you guys in one week. Otherwise, the next How to Type stream is uh, going to be on... Uh, uh, Tuesday, we'll get Leo in again, and then uh, we'll also uh, hopefully get Bruce Lee and some other folks in there as well. So uh, it's going to be up to the audience on Tuesday night. We're now allowing the audience to choose who we are typing. We are not choosing so much anymore. The audience gets to choose. Right. Uh, and, uh, and, and by the way, uh, if you give us a super chat, uh, and the highest super chat, uh, gets to, uh, pick, uh, who we're typing on Tuesdays. So we'll be happy to see you there to this Tuesday at nine Eastern. So otherwise you folks have a good night. Thank you for everything. See you next time. Right. Talk to you later. Thanks for coming. Yep. And, uh, Jimmy was uh, pleased to be here as well. Later.